Hey guys, it is Wednesday morning here in the Philippines, so it is time for us to do our more exclusive unboxing. And today it is dedicated to Chase vehicles. And this is the first all Chase video that I've done this year, for unboxing anyways. Uh, we used to do it on a weekly basis, but I kind of got out of buying the Chase cars on the secondary market because it just gets too expensive. I will still do it occasionally, like with these ones, but they were pretty fairly priced, so had to get them. So figured I would accumulate a few of them and do a video. So that's what we're doing today. We've got a chase vehicle from M2, a set of white lightnings from Johnny Lightning, and a green machine hobby exclusive from Green Light. So let's go ahead and start with our M2. This is from your driver's series, and this is a Mopar 1970 Dodge Super B440. And as you can see on the little sticker there, it is one of 750, so it is your regular chase. And these ones I really dig with the colored tires. Always been a fan of this type of chase car, uh, especially with like the Johnny Lightning, Lightning Strike cars where the car was like say yellow with yellow tires. They were the ones that started this trend. Then Green Light did it for a while with green tires on a green car, which looked really cool. Then M2 started with their Drivers series. So I have a bunch of Mopars in their Drivers uh, chase cars. So I uh, really dig them because it just uh, kind of fits with the Mopars too. The high impact paint and you have the high impact tires. <laughs> so it looks kind of... Ridiculous, but also cool at the same time. So, as you can see on the car, they usually take all of the trim and interior and make it white, including wheels and such, and sometimes the base too. But I think the base on this one is black. But we'll get him out and take a better look at him. And actually, I got to get a screwdriver to get this guy off the base here. So bear with me for just a moment. Yeah, I forgot all about these guys. Even though they don't come in an acrylic case, they still come screwed down to a base. So we need the screwdriver to get him off of his base. And anyways, <clears throat> so this one to go in the display case with all the other color tired Mopars so here he is on his display stand and really cool they still put the white letters on these tires too a lot of times they don't do that so that's something really cool the Goodyear Eagle on the orange tires orange tires with white letters kind of fits all the trim another thing that they do too as you notice usually the color of the car that they pick for that uh, chase theme, they will also color match the windows. On some, some of the earlier ones, they didn't do that. Some of the earlier ones, they had clear windows, but they've always had the color tires and all white trim and usually a white interior. Uh, and then the base, to be honest with you, I now thinking about it, I think most of them were black bases. Uh, for some reason I was thinking white, but I'm kind of looking in the other room when I went to get the screwdriver, and it looks like most of them had black bases, what I can tell, but they're all kind of stacked in these little brick rods on top of each other, but it looks like they all had black bases. So as you can see, once again, black base, and these are plastic bases. Driver Series is the cheaper lineup from M2. But a cool lineup. The one thing that I favor on these that they do not have the opening parts. So it does not disrupt the body lines or anything like that. The body lines are perfect on these cars. Uh, the hoods though, they still come as a separate piece, but they're screwed down on the driver's series. They've always been like that. But the doors on the other hand are still part of the body casting, which I really do like that fact, because as we know, 
with the opening doors, M2 is notorious for sometimes not lining up the doors properly or the door is casted wrong from the body and it just does not fit in the door jams properly. So I prefer non-opening doors. That's the one thing I do like about their Gasser series stuff. The Gasser series stuff is all molded as one body. Wish it had a more detailed engine with opening hood, but... Still, it's pretty cool, though, that it doesn't have the opening doors because that's the one thing that did screw up a lot of their castings. But as you can see, everything that should have been chrome on this car is now white. Tailpipe or uh, exhaust tips and then your bumpers, your rear tail panel. Uh, that should have probably been white because you could have an orange Mopar with an orange tail stripe and then on the Super Bs you could have had like your blacked out tail panel or white out tail panel. But the tail light bezel should have been chrome. The window trim should have been chrome. So really different but really cool um, for a chase piece. So glad to find that one and add to the Mopar lineup of driver's chase cars. I think I've got like 10 of them or something nowadays. So second on our list is a hobby exclusive green light. And this is a really subtle greeny. This one I actually got for SRP because, well, it's so subtle that I guess the seller did not know this was a greeny. The uh, paint job should have originally been yellow and black, just like on the package. And as you see, hobby exclusive. They also made Mr. Bardal, I think is how you pronounce it, his 67 Camaro also. Uh, then there's this 70, which probably should have had bigger tires and such on it in the back because I think it was tubbed. It was done more like a pro stock car. But this is still not a bad representation. Uh, but the paint job's correct. But as I was saying, it should have had black inserts. Well, as you could see, it's green inserts. So this kind of goes along with the greenies that I collect, the green paint, green machines. As I mentioned before, I was kind of uh, limiting the um, green will purchases, unless it's like retail price. But uh, And if I find them on the pegs, that's fine. But if I'm going to be buying on the secondary market and paying a premium, I'm going to stick with the green paint greenies. But this one, as I said, kind of found at retail, and it's a green paint, so, well, partial green paint. So I got lucky on that one. Uh, this, I'm not sure how many they made. It is numbered on the chassis. I think this is number 3,000 something, but that's not the greeny number, as you guys know, after, I don't know, I think it was like 2015 or 2016, for the majority, they started numbering the greenies in the regular mix. They were no longer numbered separate, but sometimes... They'll throw a wrench out there, and it, there are some that are numbered separately. Predominantly, they're Miho exclusives or something. But every now and then, you'll see like a hobby exclusive or something that is numbered separate. Or maybe I'm just getting some really low production numbers, but um, I still think they randomly do this on the hobby exclusives. So on the back of the package, just has where you can find green light online. Uh, tells you the name of the car and then like the same thing as the front Mr. Bardall and then the pattern like insert paint job of the Camaro and so forth so let's go ahead and pop him out of the package and take a look at him and this is probably one of the nicest second gen Camaro castings on the market Greenlight did a really good job with this one uh, and they also did with their first gen 67 and 68. It's just their 69 that I do not like. It's because they modded the 67 and 68 mold to make the 69. And it should have been a totally different mold. But as you can see, on this one they did go overkill with the fat tires. But still not too bad. I mean, from the side view it looks okay. But when you're looking at it from the front, yeah, they do look a little bit too fat in the front. Uh, and the car probably should not have had white walls, especially being a drag car. As I said, the car probably should have had like five spokes and big slicks on the back, skinnies in the front. Uh, so definitely should not have had white walls. 
and see a couple little imperfections here, a couple little tiny paint chips. It looks like around the wheel opening, but hey, can't complain too much. As I said, I got it for a retail price, like finding it on the pegs at Hobby Lobby or something. So, uh, anyways, as you can see, the only greeny feature here are the green inserts. Uh, so if you do have this car in regular release, you'll see that it should have had black inserts. It is an opening hood casting. And they do a pretty good job with this one, with the motor detail and such. Um, on a GM product, though, it should have been black and under the hood, the inner fenders and firewall. But hey, not too bad. Still looks good. Love the sp split bumper Camaros. It's a really cool looking car. And as I said, it's nice and subtle with the green machine feature. So I bet a lot of people overlook this one on the pegs because of that reason. You kind of just are looking at them and notice, okay, black, black, and you may not even notice the green insert. You people are more or less looking for green body, green base, green wheels, and such. So as I said, it does have a number on the bottom, 3552. Not sure how many were produced. I'm going to say since a hobby exclusive, probably 10,000 or less, but I don't know. And I'm going by the 2% thing um, that uh, you're supposed to use for figuring out how many greenies there were. So 2% of, say, 10,000 would be 200 of these. So not sure if it's higher now or not, but that used to be the rule of thumb to go with... 2% of total production, that would be your number of green machines or chase pieces. So, not sure if they're still doing that or not. But there is our greenie for the day. Uh, so, moving along, next is our White Lightning. And this set, I got for a reasonable price. I can't say it was like retail price, but I got it for about 30 bucks, And it's not a bad price, but when I got it... The package is trashed, uh, so the sender, the seller, did not package this good. You guys would not believe, but when they packaged it, they took an old egg carton and put over the blister, just to protect the blister, and that was it. And uh, they expected that to protect the package. And, well, as you can see, it did not protect the package, it did not protect the blister, the blister is dented and such so that's what you get when you do a shitty job packaging so luckily i'm not a cardboard collector and i don't keep these packaged so i'm gonna open it but um still yet when i buy something that's supposed to have a pristine card even though i'm opening it i still expect it to arrive to me with that pristine card but um Anyways, this is a cool set because you get two white lightnings. So that's why I had to buy it. And they're Nissans. And as you guys know, that's the only JDM car that I really collect is Nissans. So it didn't have any JDM, Nissan, white lightnings. So figured I would pick this up. So this is, once again, a really cool set. Let's get them out and take a look at them. On the back, though, we'll go over that real quick. The only thing it says on the back of the Johnny Lightnings is what's coming up next, what's in their regular retail releases as the single package cars. Tells you a little bit about what's in there, just Johnny Lightnings import uh, heat, replicates some of the hottest import cars in the world. Uh, drifters and racing enthusiasts worldwide are no stranger to the sought-after Nissan 240SX or the unstoppable Nissan Skyline GTR BNR34. The popularity of these machines has skyrocketed thanks in part to several major motion pictures and the realism of today's video games. Probably they're referring to Fast and Furious as the movie and then Need for Speed um, as your video games. So, because I grew up with those in my, well, 20s. I shouldn't say grew up with them, but that's what put the import cars on the map in America, pretty much. So let's get these guys out and take a look at them.
Oops. And there were some fun facts on the side, but I have already ripped open the package. But as you can see on the side, it says uh, like some fun facts about the cars. Like this one, I'll read what I can, but it says the nickname Godzilla originated with the uh, 1990 Nissan Skyline R32. It dominated the Group A racing circuit and which we've kind of went over that i've told you about that information when we were unboxing the r32 mini gt cars so that's something that i was aware of and i mentioned to you guys also uh so it says no other car in history um yeah i kind of ripped it too much so that was the ending so the australian um i've Sorry, once again, guys, can't really read it because where I tore the package. So anyways, then it tells you a little bit about the Nissan 240SX. It's still one of the most popular drift cars of today due to the rear-wheel drive S platform. Uh, so that's pretty cool. And then once again, trying to look at the Australian theme, described it as Godzilla the monster from Japan. So... I guess that's, uh, they're saying that maybe the name was um, first brought up by somebody in Australia, I guess, is what they're trying to say. But anyways, yeah, I just got that name because it was dominating the Group A racing circuit in Japan, and it uh, was unstoppable pretty much. So anyways, moving along to the cars. Here is the R34. Now, this car originally in the package came white. Uh, so, this is probably a different white, though. I'm not sure because sometimes the white lightning white is more of a pearlescent, which you could see kind of the pearlescent in the roof of this. Now, the regular release, I do not have. So, I'm not sure if it had a pearlescent look to it or not. But I'm going to say it probably was just like a white enamel or a white base coat, clear coat type of paint. Um, so another downside of this particular model is the plastic wheels. Um, trying to get it to focus. There we go. So that's the downside of some Johnny Lightning cars. They're two-piece plastic wheels, which these are. But they still made the tires white so that's cool the base is white the body is white and i'm gonna say it is a special white it's not just a standard white that was on the regular release but i cannot say that for sure because i do not have the regular in hand but um yeah so johnny lightning a lot of their cars are the plastic wheels um but this is cool because they did use the white plastic tire so really dig that and they roll really good too as you can see this table is a little unlevel on this side so next is our 240 sx and this car is really cool this one is rubber tires and if you notice sometimes on the rubber tires they will start to yellow slightly this isn't really yellow it's just kind of an off white because Looking at it next to the brilliant, like, white of the pearl white, it does look a little yellow, but it's more of, like, an eggshell off-white. So, this is uh, also in that same, like, pearlescent white paint, and then the white tires, white base, a pretty cool little car. Um, and yeah, I know not to do videos over here with this camera stand anymore. It's just really hard to get it to focus because I guess the way my hand is in front of the camera and the way the camera is angled on the table, it's not focusing so well. So sorry about that, guys. But yeah, in some cases it does focus pretty good. So you can see all the details of the car. Looks good. Marker lights, tail lights. The regular release series of this is really cool too. Uh, it's like a, I don't know, medium blue color, uh, almost like your um, Baywatch blue that comes on the, or Bayside blue, Baywatch, Bayside blue on the uh, R34. 
Um, yeah, I was thinking about David Hasselhoff, I guess, when I said Baywatch Blue. But anyways, yeah, so it was like more like a Bayside Blue that came on the R34 uh, in the regular release. So pretty cool little car. So happy to add these to my White Lightning collection because I do not have a lot of whites. I have a few, but um, I'm trying to stick with the ones that are white body and white tires. Uh, I have... Um, I think two muscle cars, and I have a Land Cruiser and a Jeep, and I think that's about it. And now these two Nissans, so I have like six white Lightnings. I did have a couple white body white Lightnings, but I sold them. As I said before, I'm trying to get a little more picky with my Chase stuff and what I collect and what I keep in my collection. So, uh, yeah, that way it doesn't get out of hand and it doesn't get too expensive. Nowadays, I'm trying to target more... Uh, like exclusive regular release cars. So that's why I've slowed down on the Chase stuff. So it may be a while before we have another all uh, Chase video. So hope you enjoyed this one. And I will be back this weekend with another special free-for-all weekend video. Not sure what we're going to be focusing on. I may even do another unboxing this week. Depends what comes in. I have a lot of different brands coming in. Uh, I have some stuff from Eno. Well, actually, one coming from Eno, uh, 64. I have some other Para 64s, uh, some Mini GTs, some Tarmac Works, uh, some M2 stuff, and then some Auto World stuff. So we have a lot to take a look at, guys. So maybe we'll do another unboxing this weekend. Not sure yet. But until then, enjoy your week. And please, if you have not yet subscribed, remember to do so. The icon here is on the right for subscribing. And then on the left, there's a link for another all chase unboxing video from last year that you may enjoy. So take a look at that. And then I will see you guys later on in the week. Thanks for watching.